Good evening. Thank you, Donald. Well, I'm in America, and today there are no gremlins. It's all working. But it's Scotland, isn't it? It's that Nicola Sturgeon that seems to, and maybe you think what she said is absolutely fantastic, uh, that they ought to. Tomorrow, Scottish Parliament ought to vote for Scotland to have another referendum and then pressure Mrs May into allowing it. There is another point of view. Uh, This is my view. There have been two referendums, two big referendums since 2014. One in Scotland about whether they should separate from the United Kingdom and another about whether the United Kingdom should leave the European Union. Nicola Sturgeon doesn't accept either of those results. She doesn't seem to like democracy very much, so now she wants in some very twisted way uh, to have a referendum in Scotland whilst the Brexit negotiations are happening, and she wants Scotland to leave the United Kingdom but stay part of the European Union. I have to say, the last time round, in 2014, it was 55-45, in remaining part of the United Kingdom. I suspect it would be even bigger this time. But let's listen to Sturgeon in her own words. Presenting officer, on Monday of last week, the First Minister announced her intention to demand a second referendum on independence. On Saturday of last week, the First Minister used her party conference speech to demand a second referendum on independence. And today we meet here to debate the SNP's demand for a second referendum on independence. And at least this last week has shown everybody what the number one priority of this Scottish Government really is. It's separation, not education. This week, they've made clear what comes first. Well, that was Ruth Davidson, the Tory leader. Now let's hear the response from First Minister in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. The First Minister's Foreign Affairs spokesman said this morning that an independent... understand why many people do not relish the prospect of another referendum on a major issue within the space of a few years. That is something that weighs heavily on me. However, the alternative to planning now is simply to drift through the next two years, hoping for the best while fearing the worst. Well, I have to say, there is no demand for a referendum in Scotland. In fact, 65% plus in the recent opinion polls do not want a second referendum. And wouldn't it be hugely obstructive and difficult, whilst the Prime Minister is going through the Brexit negotiations, to have, an, to have another, I think, wholly unnecessary referendum north of the border? So I'm asking you the very simple question. Should Sturgeon be allowed to have a referendum before these Brexit negotiations have ended. I really don't think so, but perhaps somebody can convince me. Perhaps Paul in Stoke can tell me that I'm wrong. Paul, good evening. I think you're wrong, Nigel, because she's doing her, she's doing her best for the people. Um, we, May didn't want Brexit. She didn't want it, but she's going to, she's forced down that way now. But let me tell you, for the average guy, this is not the Nigel Farage club that you're going to get everyone saying how wonderful you are. For the average guy... <laughs> I do, I'm not expecting it, Paul. It happens, Nigel. I hear this programme. Nigel, for the average guy, inflation, it's, it's rising. We're struggling. Food's going up. And I am, I'm getting nothing from this Brexit. Absolutely nothing. My life and the average person out there is going to get worse. For my kids, this is it. And the one question, Nigel, and I always want to ask you this. Do you regret this? Because you spent so much of your time going on about this. Do you regret this? Because No, what I'm really pleased about, Paul, what I'm really pleased about, and I'm in America, um, and I've been with uh, Chambers of Commerce and Rotary Clubs over the last few days, some of the biggest in the whole of the USA. I'll tell you what I'm pleased about, Paul, the fact that these guys want to do trade deals with us with cross-investment and jobs, more jobs for both of our countries. So I'm, I, I'm, I know we, we, have made, we have made an historic and great decision. But my question, my question, Paul, is to you and the question of the show, we'll discuss Brexit maybe next Wednesday. Should Sturgeon be allowed to have another referendum on separation from the UK? Of course she should be, because she's a decent person trying to do the best, because she knows what a nightmare this is going to be. And she has got the morals to stand up. She has got the morals to stand up, even, even if it goes wrong, to say, do you know what? This is not right. I'm, 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 I'm always told, you know, I'm a Ramon in the 48%, but I, I've got nowhere to go. I'm telling everyone saying to me, oh, this is your country back. Yeah, but you're not 48% now, are you? Because actually the last opinion poll showed 68% 
want the country to get on with Brexit. And even for Nicola Sturgeon, Paul, a point worth thinking about is that a third of SNP voters actually voted for Brexit. Paul thinks uh, that actually they should have this referendum. Uh, Paul thinks the EU is a great thing. He is a Sturgeonite from Stoke. That's fine. I wonder what Graham in Hay on Why has to say. Hello, Nigel. It's very good to talk to you. Um, I good think evening. Paul said is totally wrong. Um, he thinks that Nicola is trying to protect her people. I'd like to check this argument out with you, Nigel, see if it logically makes sense. She's calling this referendum because there's been a significant change since the last one, and she's using Brexit as the reason. Fair enough, that is a change. She says that she wants to protect her people from what she believes will be a hard Brexit, i.e. going down out to WTO rules and the impact that will have the so-called catastrophe this will cause of going over the cliff. Um, when she was asked at the weekend, why are you turning your back on your largest customer, the UK, England, etc., mm. um, she glibly said that she's sure because England wants trade with other countries, free trade, should they do the same with her? That's a big assumption to make, but that's what she says. But taking her argument through, if she gets what she hopes for and what assumes is right, i.e. we do have a, a hard Brexit, she gains a referendum and she wins it, and she gains entry into the European Union, which is all a lot of assumptions, but assuming she's right in her goals, she'll end up in an organisation that has to trade with her largest customer, i.e. us, on WTO rules. And that will cripple her, us people. <laughs> like it. Well, it does. I mean, I have to say, Graham, um, there were quite a few assumptions within that argument. Uh, but yes, why would you want to put yourself even further away from your biggest trading partner if your argument about being in the EU is that it's good for trade? It is illogical. It doesn't make sense. And I have to say, Graham, you know, the SNP's economics, I mean, goodness me, the whole thing was based in 2014 that oil would keep Scotland financially afloat. But it was based on oil at 113 bucks a barrel. I don't think, Graham, they get economics. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Those are these other fundamentals, like what currency they're going to use and what they're going to do for money, uh, other issues, and what bank they're going to use. I totally agree with that. Those, those are the fundamental ones. But the logic of our argument, using Brexit mm. as the excuse, I don't think stacks up. And yet people should challenge her and, and say, what happens if you end up in the European Union dealing with us on WTO rules? I think that's a great question, and I really hope, Graham, that the next time she does a press conference up in Edinburgh that some sharp-eyed journalist who's listened to what you've had to say asks her exactly that question. Graham, spot on. I enjoyed that. What is the view from Glasgow, Julie? Do you want another referendum? Absolutely no way. Um, this was the first time I've ever voted for SNP, and I'll never vote them again. I'm sick of hearing their voice. Where is the true vote? If you and me vote and you were one vote out, does that mean we've got to vote again? Where's the fairness in voting? We voted to get out. And yes. we should get out. And, and yes. the Parliament should never allow that. And never, well, n they should not allow her to, to, to re-vote this over. But a vote well, the choice, I mean, actually, Judy, the truth is, the truth is, she rejects the 2014 Scottish vote and she rejects the 2016 yeah, referendum I'm vote. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of hearing it. I, I can't stand her voice and I will never vote for SNP again. Judy, can I ask you, mm. can I ask you, what made you vote SNP? Well, because of Labour. You know, right. the way the Labour were, they weren't very good, you, you know, it's, it's just, went, they've went downhill, you know. But, so, you, um, so you voted SNP, for that but then... For reason. But in the, in the referendum, were you a Leave voter? Yes. You were, fine. Yes. Well, Julius, it, it, it's really interesting, because I think that you perhaps are typical of quite a lot of people in Scotland, who, as you say, Labour suddenly very unappetising, people switch to the SNP in big numbers, but a third, a third of SNP voters voted for Brexit. And I think politically, uh, Sturgeon's on very, very thin ice. Do you think you don't want it? Do you think this referendum is going to happen before the end of the Brexit talks? Um, I'm not sure. I really am not even sure of the government anymore. I'm not sure of any of them anymore. They all seem to make up their own minds. They all seem to lie in the government. You know, you find out a lot of lies. I just don't know where I stand anymore with the government. Mm. And, and mm. Uh, Sturgeon, as far as I'm concerned, finishing. And by the way, I hope she's listening. I'm not her people. 
I'm not included in hot people. <laughs> right. Are you listening, Nicola? You do not speak for Julie in Glasgow, even though she voted SNP. Julie, thank you very much indeed for that very interesting call. Uh, your texts and tweets coming through. I think we should have a Scottish referendum now. Whatever the outcome, it will save us from having to listen to Sturgeon. That's rather backing up what uh, Judy was says. Nigel, I think Mrs Sturgeon is deluded for trying for a referendum. She and Scotland should accept the result that Britain voted out, and that includes Scotland. I hope it is not allowed, as it is ridiculous. Cathy in Southampton. I must admit, there is a tempting argument that says, bring it on. Let's have the referendum. Let's get Scottish separation smashed. It won't be 55-45 this time. It'll be 65-35. And we'll end all... D you know, we'll end this row. Um, but I don't think it's going to happen. And I can't see Mrs May giving way. And nor, actually, in reality, do I think she should. I wonder what Brian in South Shields thinks. Brian, good evening. Hi, Nigel. How are you? I'm well. What do you think about this? Do you know, I... Uh, it, this frustrates me more than, than any topic at the moment. Uh, and, and Sturgeon, uh, I hear it with a passion which is almost biblical. Um, <laughs> but I I wish we would have a Prime Minister that would have a pair of cojones and say to this woman, you, you, you're a glorified councillor um, with the United Kingdom. You're part of the United Kingdom. Shut up. We'll get on with the job. However, that said, if she wants a referendum, as she is part of the United Kingdom and it would be a materialistic change to the other three parts of the United Kingdom. Let's have the referendum, but everybody uh, gets the vote. Uh, do I detect, you know? Brian, do I detect, Brian, in the tone of your voice, that if you were given a chance to vote on whether Scotland should leave the United Kingdom, th that you would vote for them to leave? No, no, I would vote for them to stay. Would you? OK. We, we, okay. I, I would. The, the thing is, we are a stronger nation as a collective group, but, uh, and, and I think the majority of the Scots also believe that, and that there seems to be some kind of fantasy in the land of Sturgeon and her followers that they think is an independent state ruled by, by Europe. I mean, that in itself is, is just... Well, it's illogical. It's, um, no, it's, 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 it's why, quite deliberately, uh, this evening, Brian, I'm not using the word independence. It's a complete lie. If they want to separate from the United Kingdom and become a province of the United States of Europe, that's fine. Give that to people on honest terms. Brian, I thank you for your call. Brian wants the Union to stay, but I tell you what, I bet there are quite a few English listeners out there now who are sick to death of the Scots and feel that really, not the Scots, but Nicola Sturgeon's interpretation of what the Scots are, and, and I, I hear it from London taxi drivers, get rid of Scotland, they're costing us a fortune, they never ever stop moaning, and they want a referendum perhaps to happen very quickly. I don't know, what do you think? Should she be allowed to have this referendum whilst the Brexit talks are going on? Right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from Atlanta, and it's 7.15. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show, live from Atlanta. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, all four corners of the United Kingdom are ringing in to answer the question, should Sturgeon be allowed to have yet another referendum before the end of the Brexit negotiations? Remember that Sturgeon rejects the referendum in 2014 where Scotland voted to stay part of the EU, oh, the UK, sorry, and she rejects also the Brexit referendum of last year. I'm actually personally surprised uh, that other parts of the UK aren't getting really quite angry about this. But we're going to go straight back to Scotland and to Marcus in Stirling. Should Marcus, she be allowed to have this referendum in late 18 or early 19? Uh, hi Nigel, thanks for taking the call. Um, I believe she should mm -hmm. have the right to put it to the Scottish people after Brexit. But my point tonight to you is that yep. Spurgeon has got her sums completely wrong. At the moment, currently, we have 56 MPs out of 650 in Parliament, so roughly about 9% representation. Mm -hmm. And the EU, now you can keep me right on the figures, at the 766 MEPs, God bless them, we have three <laughs> SNP. So, give, you know, we'll say that if we did leave, we go down to 700, and we'll give ourselves, well, we'll give the Scots seven, so that would be one percent representation in yes. Parliament. Uh, but it's yeah, but it's a bit worse than that, Marcus, because the European Parliament cannot initiate legislation 
All it can do is to amend or delay legislation. In fact, the European Parliament really, um, in legislative terms, is a bit like the House of Lords. And, yeah, you know, the argument that somehow Scotland, if it applies to join the European Union, uh, would have great influence, clearly is nonsense. Actually, Marcus, actually, with Brexit, one of the things that comes back to the United Kingdom should be our territorial waters. And Sturgeon could actually make a very strong case to say to Westminster, give us back, give us control of Scotland's fishing waters. She might actually find that with Brexit, as First Minister of Scotland, she's got far more power than she would have as part of the European Union. That's very true, that's very true. And you, you made the point about the electorate in the North East. Nigel, the fisheries yep. in Scotland yep. will be giving yep. up. Thanks to Mrs Sturgeon, already, before any negotiations have started, up to 80% of her fishing territories. So, a business negotiator, she ain't. No, I think that's right. And, you know, I mean, look, clearly she's got ability. Clearly she is a very good messenger that does well on radio and television and all the rest of it. Uh, but I don't think the economics of any of this makes sense. And I don't think the canny Scots are going to vote to separate from the United Kingdom, to say no to the capital transfers that come from London to Scotland and to sign up for zip influence in the European Union. Oh, and by the way, Marcus, she was saying at the weekend that, they, that Scotland would join the European Union and keep the pound. Oh, no, they won't. Any new member state, any new member state by treaty that joins the European yeah. Union has to commit itself to the euro. Can you see people in Stirling voting, voting to join the euro? No, no, and a message to, a message to your English listeners. Um, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. I really don't think there's an appetite for it. And actually, what I'm hearing now is that people are, are, are believing that there's some sort of resentment against England. The SNP have 23% representation of the Scottish overall vote. Yeah. We, a yeah. million of us voted to leave without any support from any of the major political parties. And, of course, BBC Scotland did their bit to yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. stop our Brexit happening, as yeah. you know. Marcus, I absolutely get that point. No major party in Scotland was supporting leave. UKIP does have one MEP, but it couldn't be called a major party in Scotland and certainly hardly even features on the BBC up there. Marcus, thank you very much for your thoughts and for your call. We're off to Wales. We're going to Greg in Brecon. Greg, what should happen? Should Scotland have this referendum? Should Wales have a referendum? Uh, uh, absolutely no. <laughs> anyway, right. um, uh, but it's nice to speak to you. I actually, I actually voted for Brexit and I voted for you. Um, um, well, thank you, Greg. I, so, what about what about this United Kingdom? What I mean, should I Mrs May give in? Um, I actually uh, left the United Kingdom um, about 15 years ago. Went to live in Cyprus. Um, uh -huh. I actually used this as part of uh, my my leave campaign. Um, I, I actually lived the nightmare in Cyprus when when the economy was going down the toilet and um, basically the banks crashed. And I, and I got out just before the banks crashed, after losing my job, um, almost homeless, and. That's what I'm trying to say to the people of Scotland, is that if you're going to debase your currency, and as you just said to that previous uh, caller, you know, they have to accept the euro, the, yeah. the whole economy is going to go down the pan. Yes, I mean, you've mentioned Cyprus, but we could equally talk about Greece, yeah, we could Greece, talk about Portugal. Portugal, we could talk about the whole of the Mediterranean, couldn't we? Exactly. All of whom mistakenly joined the euro, and look what a total disaster it's been. I just don't think, Greg, I mean, you know, she can, she can invent stuff like we're going to keep the pound, but the reality is you cannot now, you know, you can't, she can't stay part of the EU when we leave, therefore we leave. Logically, we could have a referendum on Scottish separation after Brexit, but then she'd have to rejoin the EU. They're not going to let her in without, without, you know, clear commitment to join the Euro. So frankly, I think we're wasting our time with this, really, aren't we? She's upsetting all of us, or many of us. Um, yeah. act and actually, I really do believe it would be a 65-35 result. Greg, I thank you, but please, SNP supporters, Scottish separatists, someone ring me, someone tell me that it makes sense for Scotland to leave the United Kingdom and join up with an emerging United States of Europe. I'm all ears. On Facebook, Nikki says, if Scotland is such a drain on England and it's taking your money, why would you want Scotland to stay in the UK? Uh, Nikki, I guess the answer to that is because it's part 
of our nation. And we've done wonderful things together in the past. I'm sad that Scottish nationalism has taken this really unpleasant anti-English tone and that in return many English say some pretty horrible things now about the Scots. I'm sad about that. Interesting, isn't it? Those of us that voted to leave the European Union don't dislike Europe, it's just the European Union that we dislike. And yet, uh, the Scottish-English argument really is getting quite personal, quite sectarian, quite nasty. Ryan says on Facebook, I don't understand English people who wanted independence for the UK from the, from the EU but can't understand why Scotland might want independence. Ryan, they don't want independence. Sturgeon doesn't want independence. She wants to be a province of an emerging United States of Europe. If Sturgeon said, we're going on our own, we're going to have our own currency, our own central bank, we will not be part of the United Kingdom, we will not be part of the European Union, we're going to be an independent Scotland, I might not think it's a very good idea, but I would respect the honesty of the position. It's the fact that she uses, misuses, willfully, this word independence, and you seem to have swallowed it. I suggest you rethink the use of the word independence. Joe says, let her have Indy too, and she will be the biggest laughing Scot stock the Scots have ever seen. I know loads of Scots who don't want it. Well, Joe, that's right. In fact, it's only a very small minority of Scots even want this referendum to happen. Um, we were... Uh, sticking with the United Kingdom, but we're going now to Alan in the Costa Brava. Alan, good evening. Nigel, good evening. Alan from Yorkshire, actually. I don't live in Sco uh, here in Spain. I'm only here on a break. But OK, I'm, uh, fine. Brexit, All right. I'm Brexit voter. I'm ex-British soldier. I'm British yep. through and through. Yep. Has anybody with a brain realised that an independent Scotland could never exist uh, with the rest of the United Kingdom without an hard border? There's no way we would ever leave the EU to stop freedom of movement of people uh, to allow Scotland to stay there with people teaming in on boatload and aircraft, getting in their cars and just driving south into good old United Kingdom for a better life. What would, well, be, the was, point of us yeah. what would be the point of Brexit if we didn't have an odd border with an independent Scotland? That is a logical point, uh, particularly if Scotland joined the Schengen area, of course, uh, where, where free movement is even freer. No, I think that is a very logical point. Um, you know, and, and, and also, as somebody said earlier, you know, effectively, if she thinks that the Brexit deal is going to go so badly wrong, and that's one of the reasons why she wants Scotland to leave, to leave the United Kingdom and stay with the EU, she may well finish up actually with World Trade Organization rules in terms of trade with England. And without England, Scotland doesn't have much of an economy. Alan, enjoy your holes on the Costa Brava. Uh, text and tweets. Dear Mr Farage, if the SNP are serious about Scottish independence, they should agitate for a referendum in England. We would hand it to them overnight, says John in Camberwell. John, I fear you're right. Everywhere I go, I hear people moaning hard about the Scots, bored to death hearing what they see as whinging on the news coming from Nicola Sturgeon, who simply cannot accept the result of either of the big referendums that we've had in the last couple of years. Scottish independence will sound a death, na death nail for the UK, as Northern Ireland would soon follow, says Don in Herne Hill. Uh, well... Uh, it's not Scottish independence, Don. I'm going to keep on saying this. Um, but honestly, Don, Scotland are not going to vote to separate from the United Kingdom and join up with the European Union and a commitment to be part of the euro. It simply isn't going to happen. Please call me. Tell me I'm wrong. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. It's 7.30 and time for the news with Rupert Barcia. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show, live from Atlanta. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Is Nicola Sturgeon driving you mad? Because she won't accept either the Scottish referendum of 14 or the Brexit referendum of 16, and she wants to have another referendum before the Brexit process is over. Should she... Be allowed to do that. Some strong views coming in on that from all over the United Kingdom. Uh, but first, interesting story. 70 MPs have written to Lord Hall, the BBC's boss, saying that the organisation since Brexit has been completely unable to accept new facts and to even at any point present Brexit 
in a positive light. Uh, the letter was put together by a Tory MP called Julian Knight, who himself had campaigned to stay in the EU, but he does say that the BBC has suffered a collective nervous breakdown. Ah, poor lovies. It must be awful for them, mustn't it? We voted for independence. I say well done to those MPs. I think the BBC were very good during the referendum itself. I think they've been truly appalling ever since. And it's not just the politics programmes. Even the food programme is saying because of Brexit, we may not be able to source the foods that we currently eat and enjoy. The more contentious issue, perhaps, than that uh, today is the death, age 66, of Martin McGuinness and perhaps the response to it. Uh, the Prime Minister said that he'd played a defining role in leading the Republican movement away from violence. In doing so, he made an essential and historic contribution to the extraordinary journey of Northern Ireland from conflict to peace. Jeremy Corbyn says that Martin McGuinness was a great family man and my thoughts are with them. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair says, I'm very hor sorry to hear of Martin's death and elsewhere on the media from commentators. There is a whole heap of eulogies. Not everybody's pleased. Um, a former soldier, um, a Mr J Williams, who lives in South Wales, has actually sent his medals back. He's so unhappy at the condolences coming out of everyone. Uh, and we've also had Lord Tebbit, uh, of course, making the very key point. Yes, it may well be true that Martin McGuinness did play a big role in the peace process, and he, getting together uh, with Ian Paisley, who I knew uh, reasonably well, uh, it was a remarkable sight. And yes, uh, peace is better uh, than, than, than war and violence and terrorism. I suspect one of the reasons McGuinness went for peace is because, frankly, British security had the IRA completely and utterly beaten and they had nowhere else to go. But I think it's wrong, I think it is completely wrong uh, to talk about McGuinness's life, to forget that at no point did he offer any apology at all for the murders that he was directly involved in and I think it is important uh, when you sum up anybody's life uh, that you say the good things but you also say the bad things about them too and I feel uh, there are sort of mass positive eulogies about Martin McGuinness conveniently sweeping over the fact that he was a senior commander of the IRA and indeed he himself fired the first shot on Bloody Sunday. To return to our theme Scottish separation. Nicola Sturgeon wants another referendum. I really don't think, however the Scottish Parliament votes tomorrow, that Mrs May should accede to that. Um, I think it would get in the way and confuse the Brexit negotiations. And what on earth would Brussels think? Who would they actually be talking to? Who would they be dealing with? It's ridiculous. Scotland voted to stay part of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom voted to leave the EU. If she's really not happy with Brexit, then once it's completed, perhaps then would be an appropriate moment for the second referendum on Scottish separation to get a crushing, crushing defeat. That's my view. What does Tony and Farron think? Tony, good evening. Yes, good evening, Nigel. Um, I think um, you're absolutely right when uh, you say that she's making people very angry. Uh, me yes. for one. Um, I have a great deal of affection for the Scottish people, as do most, um, most um, sensible English people. And... Um, they realise um, I voted for Brexit because I could see what's happening um, in the rest of Europe, especially the southern uh, parts of Europe, Portugal, Spain, Italy, etc., yeah. etc., et Greece, uh, for, you know, who've got 50% unemployment. Who would want to uh, be a part of that? So my um, um, question to the Scottish people is, is please don't believe any of this rubbish that you're being told and, um, and just uh, put your uh, thinking caps on and look across... Uh, and see that um, uh, most of the people, especially in countries like Greece, uh, would um, give their right arms to swap places with you. Um, and um, uh, and I, they're, they're just Tory haters, you know, despite the fact that um, 1,500 jobs went down here in uh, Portsmouth and went up to uh, Ross Ice to finish off the aircraft carriers. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, um, uh, and they've just been awarded the contract for the new Type 26 frigate, which is going to secure Scottish jobs for the next 20 years. Scottish jobs, not English jobs, um, and that's uh, that's making a lot of people very, very angry, really. Because um, so, so Tony, think, let me ask you: you know, what, what, what do you want from us, Tony? I think that down there, you know, uh, within sight of Pompey, uh, you've got every right to be upset. 
uh, that those jobs went to Scotland. And, 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 you know, perhaps initially that was part of the uh, calculation to try and get Scotland to stay part of the United Kingdom. But if this referendum on whether Scotland should stay part of the UK, if this referendum was extended to England, what do you think the result would be? Um, well, I've uh, spoken to a lot of uh, my friends and a lot of people who I like well, to chat to about this, um, and they'd say, yes, have it, and uh, off you go and do your own thing, but don't blame us when it all goes pear-shaped, when it all goes pear-shaped. I- Tony, I, I, you know, I've got no real evidence on this, no facts to back it up. I've seen no polling, uh, but I sense you're right. I sense a lot of English are beginning to feel that way. I'm sorry it's the case, but they are. I thank you very much for your call. Um, a text here, Nigel, we should follow the Donald's example. If Scotland leaves the UK, we will build a wall and make the SMP pay for it, from Roger in Ryslip. Well, there you are. That is the way an increasing number of English people are feeling. Uh, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland need their own currencies and independence from the London debt peddlers, is an anonymous uh, tweet uh, that gets sent to me. Richard on Facebook says, uh, shouldn't a referendum that will affect the future of the entire UK be voted on by everyone? Richard, I'm just teasing that idea out. I don't think that's going to happen, but it might be very interesting if it did. I wonder how Lee in Manchester would vote if he had a vote on whether Scotland should stay or go from the United Kingdom. Lee, good evening. Hi, Nigel. Hi. Um, I, I would let them have it. Let's let them have it. Give them it now. Don't wait till we've got the best deal, what we're going to get, and say, there you go, this is our deal, and let them jump on and eat the cream with the cherries. Let's give it them now, within the next two months, get it over and done with, and that's that. And write it in for them to say, you can't have another one for at least another 50 years. Just 50, I think the the Scots, I go up to Scotland quite a lot, and the Scots hate Sturgeon, and they want to stop with us. Let's let them have it, let's get it over and done with, end of, Mrs May, give it to her. Right. Lee, uh, I do take the point uh, that if Mrs May was to concede a referendum, it would need to happen very, very quickly indeed. We are triggering Article 50 next Wednesday at last. Please, I didn't hold my breath. Um, and we will then begin negotiations. Sadly, I I don't really think we're going to have serious negotiations for, for quite a few more weeks, maybe even a couple of months. Uh, so, Lee, your point has some merit. If this referendum has to happen, get it out of the way before the negotiations in Brussels start. There is a logic to that. Uh, but frankly, as we voted, uh, you know, as a united kingdom to leave the EU... I still don't think a referendum should happen, even in the short term. You're right, if it has to happen, do it now, but I don't believe it should happen. I wonder what Richard in West Morling thinks. Richard, should she have this referendum? Hi, Nigel. Um, No, she shouldn't. I'm going to disagree with Lee slightly. Uh, I think we should be a little bit more pragmatic. I think we shouldn't punish the Scottish people for the idiocy of their leader. She's increasingly becoming uh, um, a figurehead for the fringe group of Scots, the type of people that chased you into the pub that time. And I, and oh, I yeah. Think the way, I think the way things are panning out in, in Southern Europe, with the economic problems um, they've been exposed to as a result of their EU membership, and Northern Europe, with the social problems that they've been in, but, that, that you've been speaking about recently, um, it's becoming, the EU is becoming increasingly more toxic. I think the level-headed people of Scotland are probably beginning to realise this. The trouble is, every time she, she opens her mouth, Sturgeon. She's got a BBC microphone shoved under her nose because they're all anti-Brexit, and this is probably something to do with the, um, uh, with, with the letter that the Lords um, have got together and wrote to the BBC. So, it's Are you thing- accusing... Richard, I'm sorry. Are you accusing our great national state broadcaster, who, for the modest £145.50 a year that we're all forced to pay them, are you accusing them of bias? Nigel, they've been betraying us for donkey's years. They don't really. They, 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 they really do need heads need to roll at the BBC, um, and, we, and we certainly need a more, a more moderate and a more level-headed. I mean, it's, it's not just the BBC; it's the whole of the media. I mean, if you see, if you saw John Snow's comments today on on Twitter about uh, I McGuinness, I mean, oh, I it know. makes you feel sick. Do you know what? Uh, Do you know what? Actually, I did read out a series of comments. I couldn't even read Jon Snow's comments out. He was eulogising about a man who never once, never once, 
apologise for the murders that he was directly involved in. Richard, I thank you. Right now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC from here in Atlanta, USA, and it's 7.45. The Nigel Farage Show, live from Atlanta, only on LBC. Is Nicola Sturgeon driving you bonkers with her call for yet another referendum because she couldn't accept the last one in Scotland or indeed the result of Brexit or indeed is she bringing you great hope? Do you think it's time Scotland broke away from the United Kingdom and fully signed herself up to Europe or are you an English voter who simply had enough of the Scots moaning? Either way, uh, the other issue that we are talking about uh, this evening is the reaction to the death of Martin McGuinness and so many prominent figures... Um, in our society, uh, sending their condolences, well, fair enough, uh, but not actually making mention of some of the awful things that he did. And I mentioned earlier uh, that a Mr Williams, uh, a Jonathan from Pontypool, um, had in fact returned his General Service Medal, uh, so disgusted is he, and I just, I, we've actually got him on the line. Jonathan, could you please tell me, why have you sent back your medal? Oh, good evening. Hands across the ocean, Nigel. Right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Come on, Jonathan, what have right, you done? Yeah, very quickly, I've sent it back. Um, I, I've just been disgusted by so many things about, about what I've heard today from the, the, the entire effete um, political class who, who, who seem to think that this man is, is, is warranting virtual sainthood. But what, what really annoyed me and, and has made me very sad, and I'm sure it's not because of, uh, of, of, of the Queen's real thoughts on this. For goodness sake, she's lost members of her own family, hasn't she? Yes. She's, I think she's been very, very badly advised to send condolences to this wretched man's family, McGuinness, and... Uh, if she hadn't done it, the world wouldn't have stopped turning. The peace, the peace of the island wouldn't have changed any different. I think she's been very, very badly advised to do this. At the end of the day, the servicemen who went to Ireland to, 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 to help protect the people of Ireland from a gang of vicious psychopaths, because that's what Martin McGuinness and the people he operated were, were, were psychopathic killers. They, they, they weren't freedom fighters. These the, are the people. There were, Jonathan, to be fair, psychopathic killers on both sides, weren't there? Well, of course there were. There, there were probably one or two in the British forces, I guess. But, you know, they, they, mm. they, they're in all walks of life. But obviously, psychopaths get attracted to uh, where they can do the, the damage the most. And, of course, right. you had things like the Le Mans bombing, restaurant bombing in 1978, where 19 innocent people were incinerated on uh, the command of, uh, of McGuinness, uh, and, and what was their crime? They happened to be there having an, an annual general meeting of the local Border Collie Society. Did you ever hear him apologise for any of this? Because I didn't. He never apologised for no. it. He never recanted no. this, and this is the sickener, no. you see. This man, this man has gone to his grave knowing where the bodies are buried. And, yeah. and I think will never uh, know where they are buried now. I think Norman Tebbit, Jonathan, feels very like you do. Um, I, I think it is... I think we... I mean, it is possible, of course, for people to reconcile. It is possible to people, for people to forgive. Um, but it's very difficult to forgive, and it's very difficult to say nice things about a man who did appalling things and at no point ever apologised for any of it. Jonathan, you must feel incredibly strongly about this. I'm not going to comment um, on the Queen herself, but I do feel, I do feel that many other uh, supposedly responsible people in society have said very, very positive things about the last 20 years of Martin McGuinness's life and made no mention of what happened in the previous 30. And, Jonathan, I do think that's wrong, and I thank you very much for your call. Uh, back to um, Nicola Sturgeon... Back to, should she be given a second referendum? The Scottish Parliament will vote on this tomorrow. Almost certainly they'll vote in favour, but it'll be up to Mrs May. Should Mrs May grant that second referendum at the end of 18 or early 19, whilst we're negotiating the Brexit process? And I wonder what Sarah in Dagenham makes of that proposal. Hello, Nigel. Hi. Um, uh, hello, I was just wondering... Uh, bearing in mind, I believe, the Scottish re referendum was 2014, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yep, and the the British referendum vote, you know, for the, the uh, Conservative vote was 2015. Yep. And then, so the referendum vote was 2016. That's the precise timeline, yes. Thank you, right, OK. So, bearing in mind, now, about the... the, the the Brexit referendum, you'd have demanded a second referendum if the vote had been so close. No, it wouldn't That's have got right, one for 25 years. 
Wouldn't have got one for 25 years. No, but you did ask for it. You did say that that's what you'd have asked for, didn't actually, you? Actually, actually, I didn't. I said there are many, there are many inside, inside the Conservative Party who will be irreconcilable. But would I have been asking for another referendum on the EU? No, it would have been completely whistling in the wind and a waste of time. OK, well, fair enough. All right. Don't you think, though, that you could empathise with Nicola Sturgeon just a little bit? I find it hard, but go on, why should I? Well, because bearing in mind, as I said, you did say that if the referendum would have been really, really tight the other way round, you'd have said another referendum would have been necessary. Well, I'm not going to argue with, uh, on that point with you. I didn't. I said there are some that would. I wouldn't be one of them. It would have been a waste of time. But, Sarah, isn't the point, isn't the point that she, she doesn't accept the result of the 2014 Scottish referendum on separation, nor does she accept the 2016 referendum on Brexit. So I'm beginning to get a bit tired of this really ridiculous, convoluted argument where she says she wants to be out of the UK, part of the European Union, and she still uses the word independence. I am a little bit impatient with that. I understand that completely, but I, what I'm saying is, don't you think that you could empathise with her just a little bit, in honesty, come on. Well, I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what I think. I think that once Brexit is completed, then I think the Prime Minister could well say to Nicola Sturgeon, OK, you can have another referendum on separation. But to do it, to allow this massive distraction whilst we're negotiating and whilst we're setting ourselves up, not just with Europe, but actually with the rest of the world too. The most important decision, political decision, we've ever taken in our lifetimes, we cannot allow a, a domestic, internal referendum to put us off course. So, Sarah, if I have any sympathy, it would come later, you know, after 2019, but certainly under those circumstances before. Carl on Facebook's being really helpful. He says, why doesn't Sturgeon hold a referendum on holding an independence referendum in 2018? That is the only fair way of proving the Scots actually want to have one. I'm sure the UK government would accept that, but of course Sturgeon wouldn't take the risk. Stevie and Berwick says, not all Scots want independence. We proved that last time round. A tweet here. What happens when Sturgeon loses that vote? Will there be a third or a fourth or a fifth one? Asks Tony. I think the answer has to be yes. I'm not sure Nicola Sturgeon accepts any results of referendums. I wonder what Richard in Wanstead thinks. Richard, should she have a referendum? Hello, Nigel. Uh, first Hello. of all, may I say I am a big fan of yours, and I think you're the best prime minister this country never had. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know about that. Right. I don't know about that. But what, but what about the first minister of Scotland, Richard? T yeah, tell us about her. Back to Scottish independence. I'd like to offer a view from a different perspective that nobody has actually touched upon yet. If, yep. uh, Nigel, in the past, if countries such as Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan have uh, become independent, then I think it, uh, Scotland and Wales, for that matter, have a moral right to become and demand independence. But now, only, if but just, Richard, uh, only if the people want it, Richard, and the people clearly don't want it. Yes, but uh, the problem, Nigel, if I may say so, if you could just bear with me, the problem is that, you see, uh, Scotland voted uh, for uh, independence before the actual Brexit vote. Now, it is a fact that the majority of Scots for Brexit, from that Brexit vote, actually voted to stay in the EU, and that's the problem. However, if they do become independent, the Scots, I mean, then I think England should put the proviso in that any Scots entering England should have passports with visas. Well, you're the second person, Richard, that said that if Scotland leaves uh, the United Kingdom but is manages to rejoin the European Union, that there would need to be a hard border. Somebody even suggested a sort of Donald Trump-style updated Hadrian's Wall. Richard... I thank you very much for your call, the last call, the last comment that I can take on this this evening. And I thought the point that was made early on tonight, that if she wants this referendum because she wants to leave the EU because she fears the UK is going to get a shocking deal with the European Union, which she's happy to be a part of, that would mean Scotland trading with England under WTO rules. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. 
I believe as and when this referendum happens, if it ever does, there'll be a clunking majority to stay part of the United Kingdom. But I don't want it messing up the most important political negotiations of our time. No Scottish referendum should be given by Mrs May until after the Brexit process. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show. I'm back in London tomorrow evening from 7. Coming up at 10, it's Ian Collins. And they get worse. For my kids, this is it. And the one question, Nigel, and I always want to ask you this. Do you regret this? Because you spent so much of your time going on about this. Do you regret this? Because No, what I'm really pleased about, Paul, what I'm really pleased about, and I'm in America, um, and I've been with uh, Chambers of Commerce and Rotary Clubs over the last few days, some of the biggest in the whole of the USA. I'll tell you what I'm pleased about, Paul, the fact that these guys want to do trade deals with us with cross-investment and jobs, more jobs for both of our countries. So I'm... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm no, on, we, we, have made, on, we have made an historic... And great decision. But my question, my question, Paul, is to you and the question of the show, we'll discuss Brexit maybe next Wednesday. Should Sturgeon be allowed to have another referendum on separation from the UK? Of course she should be, because she's a decent person trying to do the best, because she knows what a nightmare this is going to be. And she has got the morals to stand up. She has got the morals to stand up, even, even if it goes wrong, to say, do you know what? This is not right. I'm, 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 I'm always told, you know, I'm a Ramon in the 48%, but I, I've got nowhere to go. I'm telling everyone saying to me, oh, this is your country back. Good evening. Thank you, Donald. Well, I'm in America, and today there are no gremlins. It's all working. But it's Scotland, isn't it? It's that Nicola Sturgeon that seems to, and maybe you think what she said is absolutely fantastic, uh, that they ought to. Tomorrow, Scottish Parliament ought to vote for Scotland to have another referendum and then pressure Mrs May into allowing it. There is another point of view. Uh, this is my view. Uh, there have been two referendums, two big referendums, since 2014. One in Scotland about whether they should separate from the United Kingdom, and another about whether the United Kingdom should leave the European Union. Nicola Sturgeon doesn't accept either of those results. She doesn't seem to like democracy very much, so now she wants in some very twisted way uh, to have a referendum in Scotland whilst the Brexit negotiations are happening, and she wants Scotland to leave the United Kingdom but stay part of the European Union. I have to say, the last time round, in 2014, it was 55 45 in remaining part of the United Kingdom. I suspect it would be even bigger this time. But let's listen to Sturgeon in her own words. Presenting officer, on Monday of last week, the First Minister announced her intention to demand a second referendum on independence. On Saturday of last week, the First Minister used her party conference speech to demand a second referendum on independence. And today we meet here to debate the SNP's demand for a second referendum on independence. And at least this last week has shown everybody what the number one priority of this Scottish Government really is. Yeah. It's separation, not education. This week, they've made clear what comes first. Well, that was Ruth Davidson, the Tory leader. Now let's hear the response from First Minister in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. The First Minister's Foreign Affairs spokesman said this morning that an independent... understand why many people do not relish the prospect of another referendum on a major issue within the space of a few years. That is something that weighs heavily on me. However, the alternative to planning now is simply to drift through the next two years, hoping for the best while fearing the worst. Well, I have to say, but you're not 48% now, are you? Because, actually, the last opinion poll showed 68% want the country to get on with Brexit. And even for Nicola Sturgeon, Paul, a point worth thinking about is that a third of SNP voters actually voted for Brexit. Paul thinks uh, that, actually, they should have this referendum. Uh, Paul thinks the EU is a great thing. He is a Sturgeonite from Stoke. That's fine. I wonder what Graham in Hay on Why has to say. Hello, Nigel. It's very good to talk to you. Um, I good think evening. Paul said is totally wrong. Um, he thinks that Nicola is trying to protect her people. I'd like to chuck this argument out with you, Nigel, see if late logic it makes sense. She's calling this referendum because there's been a significant change since the last one, and she's using Brexit as the reason. Fair enough, that is a change. 
She says that she wants to protect her people from what she believes will be a hard Brexit, i.e. going down out to WTO rules and the impact that will have the so-called catastrophe this will cause of going over the cliff. Um, when she was asked at the weekend, why are you turning your back on your largest customer, the UK, England, etc.? Mm. Um, she glibly said that she's sure because England wants trade with other countries, free trade, should they do the same with her? That's a big assumption. There is no demand for a referendum in Scotland. In fact, 65% plus in the recent opinion poll do not want a second referendum. And wouldn't it be hugely obstructive and difficult whilst the Prime Minister is going through the Brexit negotiations to have, an, to have another, I think, wholly unnecessary referendum north of the border. So I'm asking you the very simple question. Should Sturgeon be allowed to have a referendum before these Brexit negotiations have ended? I really don't think so, but perhaps somebody can convince me. Perhaps Paul in Stoke can tell me that I'm wrong. Paul, good evening. I think you're wrong, Nigel, because she's doing her, she's doing her best for the people. Um, we, May didn't want Brexit. She didn't want it, but she's going to, she's forced down that way now. But let me tell you, for the average guy, this is not the Nigel Farage club that you're going to get everyone saying how wonderful you are. For the average guy... <laughs> I don't, I'm not expecting it, Paul. It happens, Nigel. I hear this programme. Nigel, for the average guy, inflation, it's, it's rising. We're struggling. Food's going up. And I am, I'm getting nothing from this Brexit. Absolutely nothing. My life... And the average person out there is going 